name is Heather Fungi. This is my Task 8 Alternative video for GI Contrast Study for VETT215 Diagnostic Imaging 3 Capstone Project. And first I'm going to talk about what a contrast study is. Um, a contrast study is a series of radiographs taken at specific time intervals with the administration of a contrast media. Um, for today's study, I'm going to be using barium sulfate, which is a positive contrast agent that appears white or radio-opaque on radiographs. Barium works because um, it changes the density of the organ systems once it is there by... It works because... It has a higher atomic number of 56 in comparison to calcium, which is what bones are comprised of, which has an atomic number of 20. Um, and some indications for performing this contrast study would be vomiting, diarrhea, painful abdomen, or a sus suspected foreign body or abdominal mass. Some contraindications to performing this study would be a distended esophagus or abdomen due to fluid, a GDP, or ileus due to torsion. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have all of our supplies and materials ready for the study. I have a red rubber catheter, which is going to be our gastric tubing. I have our lubricant and our syringes filled with barium and water. I have one inch roll of tape, which will act as our mouse gag. And I have a towel for any cleanup because barium can be particularly messy. So this is our patient. And he is going to be needing a barium contrast study today. Um, so we're going to get everything set up in our computer system. Um, we're going to get the patient and client information so that our radiographs are properly labeled. I'm also going to set it up that we are taking a right side down lateral and a BD. And then it is going to automatically label a radiograph as a right side down lateral. And as long as we have our patient facing a certain direction, it will also automatically label our VD with the proper right label marker as well. Um, and then once we're finished taking our radiographs and we get them into submission, it will automatically add the hospital and doctor information as well. So the first thing we need to do is take a scout radiograph, and a scout radiograph is a right lateral side view. And the reason for a scout radiograph is to look for any obvious foreign bodies or anything that would make the gastrointestinal um, contrast study unuseful, or if there's any stool in the colon that we would need to administer an enema before performing the series. So we want to measure our patient. So we have our calipers. We want to measure at the TL junction, which is the thickest part of the abdomen. I'm gonna make sure it's we're not pressing down on it too hard and it's, there's not some room in here. So I got a measurement of nine. And we also want to go ahead and measure our patient for the VD view as well. And we're also going to measure at the TL junction for this measurement also. Our patient here is nice and round, and he is a nine on both sides. So we are going to view our technique chart here in four eight nine centimeters abdominal radiograph. We are going to set our MAs at six point four and our KVP at sixty. All right, and those will be our settings for both lateral and VD views. All right, so we're going to turn on our x-ray light here, and we want to properly collimate for a lateral abdominal view, which would be from the T9 all the way down to the acetabulum. So we'll have that nice and collimated. And as you can see, I have my proper lead gown, thyroid collar, and dosimeter badge. And then because our pet is under some sedation, I am not going to wear my lead gloves. I'm actually going to go behind a wall to decrease some of the radiation exposure here. So, I have my hand piece, and I'm going to go behind the wall over here, and I'm going to snap our scout radiograph.
Okay. So once that is taken, it's going to show up on our computer here, which you can't really see too much um, other than maybe a little bit of the stuffing and the plastic bag that I have inserted to act as the stomach. Um, but when you look at it, you just want to make sure that the collimation and your exposure factors are done properly so that you don't have to do any repeats. And so once that looks good, we are able to start our bearing study. So I'm going to make sure this is set back on our lateral. So because we're going to be taking another lateral view immediately after the bearing is administered. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to sit my patient up in a nice dermal recumbency. I'm going to take my gastric tubing and I'm going to measure from the end of the snout here all the way to the last rib, which should be where the stomach is. And the reason that we measure that is because if we go, we don't measure and we go too far into the stomach, we can actually perforate the gastric wall and we definitely do not want to do that, especially if our patient is already having any kind of diseases or anything going on in there. So once that is done, it's nice and measured. We are going to take our lubricant. I'm going to put it on a paper towel here. And I'm going to just get that nice and ready so we don't want to cause any discomfort. All right. Now we are also going to use our mouth gag. Make sure I... Now the purpose of the mouth gag is just to make sure that our patient isn't going to bite down on the tubing or anything like that. So we have our mouth gag, we have our tubing, which I have marked with a little piece of tape so I know exactly how far to go. Um, you can mark it with the tape or if you have a marker available, you can do that. I'm just going to go smoothly into the stomach. Stomach is a little bit uncooperative at the moment. In a live patient, it would be much smoother. All right, so once once the gastric tube is inserted down to the tape, which you know is always the Stomach, you want to make sure that it is properly in place. Now, it is possible to accidentally insert the tube into the trachea, which would be very, very um, bad. So, we have a little syringe of water here that we are going to flush down. And the water, um, if the tube is properly in the stomach, then the dog will not cough. But if it went down the trachea and it is going into the chest cavity, then it would cause some coughing. So once we know that the um, water is good, the gastric tube is in place, we are going to administer our barium. So um, the barium that we have, we're going to do 8 to 10 milliliters per kilogram. And our patient today is going to be 4 kilograms. So I pulled up 32 milliliters of barium. All right, so we have our two, and we're going to just make sure that um, our tubing is on here real good, and then we're going to slowly administer. Alright, looking for any messes, we have our towel here for cleanup. tubing has all of the barium and we're going to finish that and flush a little bit of water and then we're going to kink our tubing and slowly pull it so that we don't cause any aspiration of the barium. Now once the barium has been administered, we want to immediately take our lateral and ventral radiographs. 
So our machine is already set because we had already taken a lateral view. So we're going to set our patient back here and make sure that it's still properly collimated from the T9 to the acetabulum. We have that there. And then we're going to go back behind our wall and shoot that view. And as we can see on the computer, the barium has gone into the stomach. And we will take our BDD once we make sure that that lateral has the proper exposure settings and collimation. And so for a lateral view, we want to this time collimate from our T7 down to our acetabulum. And we want the center beam on our TL junction. We have that set up with our patient here in dorsal recumbency. So I'm going to go back behind the wall and shoot this next view. All right. So we have our two views um, because one view is not enough on a 3D patient. So we have our two views. Um, we can also do a left side down lateral and a DV, which is a dorsal ventral um, radiograph to get a full look at our patient here. And so after this view, we want to wait 15 minutes. Now the first immediate view, you can see the stomach outlined by the barium. After 15 minutes, you can see the stomach and it should be making its way into the duodenum. Um, at 30 minutes, you can see the stomach, the duodenum, and the jejunum. And then you'll take one at one hour, which is 60 minutes, where you can see still the stomach, duodenum, and jejunum. And then you can take one hourly from there. At the two hour mark, you should be able to see the stomach, the complete small intestine, and entering into the cecum. And then you can hourly, by about four hours in a dog, um, the barium should be completely out of the stomach, but you should be able to see the full, large, and small intestines. Okay, so. Um, after you finish your hourly views and you get all the diagnostic images that you would like to take, you can wake your patient up and assess from there. And that is a barium contrast study.